So um, I'm going to talk about uh, chalcophile trace element uh, indicators um, for the Kabanga and uh, Kabanga in Tanzania, which I'm sure everyone has heard of, and the Muramera and Rujungu uh, intrusions, which are just over the border in Tanzania, in Burundi. So here's the map. Um, here are the Kabanga group of conoliths. Uh, situated in uh, mesoproterozoic um, sediments. And what we have is a, is a synclinal structure here with the axis running down coincidentally along the border between Tanzania here to the north and Burundi to the south. Um, and in Burundi, we, we have the Muramera. Let me uh, use the, sorry. Yeah, so uh, the Murumera and Rujungu um, groups of conoliths, which are mostly hosted within a fairly thick uh, gabbroic sill in green. Um, but associated with this large sill, we get a whole load of thinner uh, sills, um, anywhere from 10 to 4 meters thick. And it's these sills which I'm going to focus on a little bit today in this talk. The other thing I would like to point out in the, in the map is the presence here um, in the footwall to the intrusions of carbonaceous sediments, uh, carbonaceous uh, shales or uh, mica schists, both um, to the south of the Rujungu intru uh, intrusions and up here to the north, uh, north of the Kabanga. So these are in the football of the intrusions. The intrusions themselves are intruded into uh, well laminated uh, mica schists, which are essentially siltstones, uh, which are highly sulfidic. They contain sulfides, but not graphite, not uh, carbon material. So I just want to talk about the tenors of the intrusions at, uh, in the Kabanga Muramera um, groups. Uh, essentially, the mineralized or the economic mineralization is up here on this nickel sulfur diagram. So these are um, medium tenor sulfide bodies. Um, and the, what is regarded as economic at the moment, Kabanga North, Tembo and Kabanga Main, they generally have grades of sulfur uh, greater than 20%. In other words, they are massive or near massive uh, deposits. Um, what I'm gonna look at a little bit uh, is these, this group of, uh, not really a, a full on deposit, but uh, a mineralization, which I've called peripheral veins, which occur in the footwall of the uh, main intrusions and which have uh, very high tenors, at least high tenors, uh, for the Kabanga area. They have tenors of 6 to 7 uh, or even up to 10% of nickel in 100% sulfides. Um, let's go on. So here's a similar diagram but showing arsenic against sulfur. Um, and these are individual samples. So the very low tenor the, in blue are the low tenor sulfide mineralization. It has a very low content of arsenic. So for the uh, low tenor mineralization, sulfur arsenic values are lower than 1000 in general. Uh, the massive sulfides of Kabanga North, for example, they also have the bulk of the mineralization is around between uh, sulfur arsenic of 10,000 to 1,000, but they do have values going up to uh, uh, sulfur arsenic values of, let's say, 500 or uh, so. These peripheral veins, which I was talking about, they are um, seen over here a few. Let me go back. Everything is running very slow. Okay, actually, I'm going to turn off my video if, uh, if I can. Oof. 
Okay. So um, what we see here in the photo up uh, upper right is uh, pinkish colored drops of or grains of nickelite, a nickel arsenide, in a near massive sulfide in one of these peripheral veins. These peripheral veins are highly enriched in arsenic. Uh, whereas over here, this uh, slide, this picture is showing um, a typical massive sulfide from Kabanga North, uh, basically just pyrotite and pentlandite, and with a couple of chromite grains in there. So hardly a hint of any arsenic in there. So the, there's a big difference in the arsenic content of the sulfides associated with the peripheral veins, which are also high tenor. Uh, they tend to be, these are the ones with uh, six to 7% nickel in the 100% sulfide. So where is this arsenic coming from? Uh, my contention is the arsenic is coming from the uh, graphitic or carbonaceous metasediments in the foot wall. And here I show arsenic uh, values in stream sediments, showing that the stream sediments enriched in arsenic are all coming from carbonaceous sediment uh, bedrock. The uh, sulfide rich siltstones here, which are in the hanging wall and into which the intrusions are intruded, um, they have relatively low values of arsenic. And this can be seen in the next slide where carbonaceous sediments here uh, have values of arsenic uh, going up over 100, 100 parts per million of arsenic and over five parts per million of antimony, whereas most of the other sediments into which the intrusions have been intruded have fairly low values of both arsenic and antimony. So now let's look at one of these minor sills which occur in the foot wall and laterally extensive uh, to the main intrusions. Um, at the top, oh, at the top, they have a chilled margin, very fine, fine grained uh, chilled margin against, uh, with a fairly sharp clean contact against sediments. Um, lower down, they go into a kind of uh, acicular um, pyroxene spin effects uh, texture here, which you can find in the whole upper half of the sill. And at the bottom of the sill, you get a granular cumulate texture uh, with a melanoritic or, or mel yeah, melanoritic or even pyroxenitic composition. So it looks like these sills, uh, this one is only four meters thick, uh, are often uh, well differentiated. And you see that in the geochemical profiles. So incompatible elements like sodium and yttrium, they show a peak in the upper half where the spin effects is occurring. And they have lows in the bottom uh, cumulate portion, whereas the compatible elements, magnesium, chromium, nickel, and even arsenic, they show enrichments at the base of the at the base of each sill. Uh, arsenic is interesting because it's not really supposed to be a compatible element in basaltic uh, melts, um, but it does show this correlation with nickel um, in other sills as well. So this is this is the Rujungo A sill, which I've just showed you on this side. We're showing chromium. Uh, profiles, nickel profiles, and arsenic. And in each of these thin cells, you're getting a basal enrichment in arsenic and in nickel. And this enrichment in nickel and arsenic is um, similar to uh, an enrichment in chromium, but you see that the chromium um, enrichment is not as, uh, uh, is broader and not really so restricted to the basal uh, sample, such as we get here or here. So basically what I would be proposing is that this um, basal enrichment in nickel and arsenic is due to uh, the presence of a nickel arsenic, um, nickel arsenide, possibly um, originally a nickel arsenide melt in very small quantity 
being entrained within the magma uh, when the sill was emplaced. So this is a, an emplacement model for Kabanga, um, drawn very heavily from uh, Meyer and Barnes, uh, Wolf Meyer's uh, model, which he proposed uh, way back in 2010. Um, the, my main modification is now to propose that the, his uh, B or beta magma, which is the second or third pulse of intrusion, has actually spent more time passing through these arsenic enriched carbonaceous shales. And that um, it is this magma which has um, had the highest R factor and is therefore richest in nickel, copper, uh, and PGE, as well as arsenic and antimony. And um, this arsenic and antimony uh, is acting as a, to me, is acting as a, as a, as an indicator that uh, we have the high tenor sulfides, which are enriching the earlier formed uh, pools of massive sulfide, which had formed from the A magma, uh, the earlier A magma, and that the later C magma, which appears to have come in over the top, has very low tenor sulfides, these low tenor sulfides were largely derived from the sulfidic siltstone. So the intrusion pathway, if you like, for the sea magma has largely passed through the siltstones, whereas the uh, intrusion pathway for the B magma has largely passed through an assimilated uh, material from the carbonaceous shales. And I expect, I haven't done the Delta 34S measurements myself, um, but Wolfmeyer and his uh, co-workers have done that. And they found indeed that there is uh, subtle differences in the Delta 34S signature for the A, A magma, the B magma, and the C magma. And I'm proposing that this will turn out to be because they've assimilated sulfur from different uh, sedimentary reservoirs. And that this again could be uh, part of the, um, uh, uh, an exploration method for uh, differentiating, for exploring for intrusions, which have uh, the higher tenors, which are going to be economic in the area. Thank you very much.